This is my electric hydraulic tubing bender. It's built from plans from Got Trikes online. Everything has been made by myself, including the dies. But it's based on Pro Tools 105 tube bender. And the idea is you can purchase the dies and it will fit this machine. But the dies are very expensive, so I decided to make my own. The plans state you can use an 8 ton ram. These are very cheaply purchased on eBay, used on engine cranes and things like that. But I've used uh, the electrics and hydraulics from an old sausage machine and the ram is also from the same machine. It produces about 10 tons so it's a bit more than the 8 tons but that's no problem. The rest of the sausage machine got used to build this waste oil burner which I've got another video on that on my channel if you'd like to see that. So let's switch it on. That's the control lever. It's a double acting cylinder. What it does is it pulls the tube around the die so the tube is always in tension and that's important because when you bend tubing you've got the inside which is under compression and the outside which is under tension so you tend to get um, puckers on the inside and keeping the tube under tension all the time is going to reduce this effect. I wanted a tubing bender in order to make this helicopter and you, as you can see there are a lot of bends in thin aluminium tube so we can see that it did a nice job this is three mil wall aluminium tube and there is a better form on three mil as you might expect in aluminium uh, the rest of it is all 1.6 and you can see on this 1.6 tube how it has flattened out the shape on that thin gauge aluminium. So that is a downside of not having a mandrel but you could add a mandrel but it is doable on this machine. You would have to build a framework coming out the back of it and obviously have your mandrel so that uh, it can't be pulled. So making the dies you start off with a big bit of material like that and you turn it into that. What I did in order to make this radius was I made this tool. There's an insert that screws in the end of there and that rotates and you just turn it with a handle. There are internal radius tools that are adjustable you can buy for a lathe and this would probably be a better way of doing it than I did it. The way I did it, I have to make a tool for that radius each time. How I made the guide was in the milling machine. I held this in the vise and then I just plunged down in Z with this big milling cutter. But it was a bit of a slow process. And actually, I think if you did it on the lathe, bigger bit of material, bored a hole all the way through and then cut it off afterwards, that would be a faster way. I also use this tubing bender to make a roll cage for a Mark II Escort and I did check that the, the quality of the bend was good enough for roll cage building. Let's see it in action. I've got a little job for it. What I want to do is reduce the length of these skids. These are extended skids for when I'm teaching myself to fly the helicopter. I just want to reduce them because they're a bit too long so I've got to re-bend the end after it's cut. Here's the bend I want to recreate. It's 25 degrees. With this type of bender you have to use grease otherwise you'll get galling particularly on aluminium. What I've done is made this little cap piece and that's what clamps the tube. What I've got here is a digital inclinometer and I can reference that 
to zero. On this occasion I haven't got any tubing sticking out beyond the bender where I could normally mount the inclinometer so I'm just going to have to hold it against the bracket on this occasion. There we go. No puckering at all on the inside. There is some flattening out on the outside, being thin walled aluminium. That's about the best this machine can do on such thin material. What I didn't allow for on this occasion was any spring back. It'll always spring back, but by different amounts according to the thickness and diameter of the tube. So it's best to do a test with the same gauge material, work out the spring back and then you'll always get what you want. On this occasion it's you know, just over three degrees of spring. This is inch and a half cold drawn seamless row cage tube. It's 2.5 millimeters wall. Let's see how it does. Certainly looks a nice bend. No crinkling on the inside. Maintains its shape on the outside. We've got thirty six point three that way. Still thirty eight point one the other way. The percentage change in those two measurements determines whether it's going to meet the specifications that you want to achieve. I have cut this die in a perfect circle, but actually I think some dies are manufactured so that there isn't a perfect circle and it's some other shape in order to reduce that ovality problem. Overall then, I'm really, really pleased with it. It's done a great job for me. It's allowed me to build a helicopter. And as anyone else is thinking about doing the same, you could build one too.